Hi everyone, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. We're gonna be continuing our playthrough of Spectre Ops in just a moment, but I wanna point your attention to a link I've put in the description of this video. There you'll be able to download a PDF version of this movement sheet. This is great because you can print out more if you run out of the ones included with the game. But also, if you're trying to help plan out the hunter's move between the episodes, you may find that sheet a little easier to follow along on. I also want to bring to your attention a couple of rules clarifications. One thing to note about the Prophet's post-cognition ability is that when it says you learn the agent's whereabouts from two turns ago, you start the count at the agent's current location and count two back from there. So if it was turn four, the agent would announce where it was at turn two, in this case, S9. Finally, when placing the last scene token, the current printed rules do say to place the agent model on top of the token as well. However, a new document updating the rules is going to be released that indicates you do not need to do this, which preserves the hidden identity of the agent until they're caught stationary in the line of sight of one of the hunters. And that's the way we explained it in the instructional video, but I wanted to make sure that that was clear. And hey, we've been joined by... Luke Smith. So now it's time to continue our playthrough. And there was lots of great suggestions on what I should do with these hunters to try to draw that net in around Agent Luke. And the one that got the most votes was from Hummel Dudler. So let's go to the board and see what he wants us to do. Quite a bit of discussion was given to where Luke could possibly be because we want to move the hunter to a location that will give it the best chance of identifying the agent. And suspicions were running high that maybe Luke is sitting on either D18 or F18. So in the end, the decision was made by Hummel Dudler to move the beast using quadrupedal movement five spaces to C18. Now, Luke, can we see you? Nope. We can't see you? Nope. Oh, foiled again. Yep. Wow. Okay, so now we still have the, uh, we still have the Prophet left over. And Hummel didn't have a proposal, but some talk had been given to maybe moving the Prophet to K16 where it could see down this street and along this one as well. But I'm going to call an audible here, and I actually want to get the Prophet back inside of the vehicle because I don't believe that Luke is going to be able to cross this street uh, this turn. And I'd actually like to be able to get the Prophet farther down the map, potentially. So I want to be able to drive next turn. Not sure if this is a good call, but it's the one I'm making. Luke, you little sneak. <laughs> I thought for sure we're going to have at least the identity of the agent at the beginning of this episode. Not yet. No, not yet. But there's still time for us to figure out who this agent is. Luke, do you want to go ahead and start playing at your move? I am going to take the Prophet off of this vehicle token and put it in the vehicle where it's supposed to be. Oh, also, I yes. will be using one of my equipment cards. Okay, well, oh, it's when you have to rotate. Yes, I oh. do not reveal. Okay, because sometimes you have to reveal the equipment when you use it, sometimes you don't have to reveal it at all, and sometimes you have to rotate it. So, yeah. he's rotating. We know something has happened. Also, mm -hmm. a last scene token will be revealed. Ooh, interesting. Sort of. Because you've used equipment, so this could all be a ruse. <laughs> all right, let's, let's go to the board and, and see where this last scene token is going to be placed. I'm moving the last scene token to G18. Suggesting that you cross the line of sight of the beast. And I played a card. Yes, and you played equipment, so I don't know what to think. I wish we could just quit right here and turn the responsibility back over to the viewers at this point, because my head is spinning. <laughs> I don't know where I want to send my hunters, and I don't want to miss something obvious. Well, okay, one of the things I did last turn is I put the Prophet back in the vehicle. And the reason why I did this is because I do want to drive. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, the question is, do I want to be able to see down this street or down this street? I'm going to go eight, nine. I kind of did a little zigzag there. But I think, I think I'm going to stop the vehicle right here just so I can know if Luke passes by this road. I think that's more concerning to me than him going down this road here. The next question is whether or not I want to get out of the vehicle. And I kind of do, but I can't use the motion detector if I leave the vehicle. Mm. And I want to be able to do that potentially next turn as well, just in case I am on a total wild goose chase here. So I think I want to stay in the car. Luke, can I see you from this position? No. All right, that's not a big surprise. All right, I've been going back and forth about what I want to do with the beast here. I'm just going to make a decision. I'm going to move four spaces, one, two, three, four, to G21. This way I can see all the way along here, 
and all the way along here. Hopefully, hopefully this will give me a chance of spotting the agent. Luke, can I see you? Nope, you can't see me. <laughs> no, X -A. Not, not again. Well, Luke again is staying a step ahead of us. Well, actually two because there's two of you. That's true, there's two of us. You're staying a step ahead of both of these hunters. Uh, go ahead and plan out your next movement, Luke, and I'm just going to sit here and stress and obsess about <laughs> where you could be at this moment. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I'm glad that I left the profit in the vehicle because being able to use the motion detector would be, would be helpful this turn. I have a tiny announcement. Okay. What's that? Because of the profit's ability, I will be completing an objective next turn. Because of the profit's ability? Yes. You know his ability where I have to say if I'm completing an objective? Oh. <laughs> Wait a second, what? I'm completing one next turn. <laughs> well, okay. I think I know which one it has to be, but I am very <laughs> surprised. Okay, let's, let's go back to the board, see if I can do something useful. I have to say I'm baffled, I'm befuddled. I'm not sure how this happened, but I do think Luke is probably the Blue Jay agent, which is able to activate the objectives from two spaces away. I know that's their special ability, which means that Luke could be, for example, here or not here. That'd be in the street. I don't think that's where he would be. Could be here, but I don't, I don't think he'd get that far. I don't think there's a possible way he could have gone from here all the way over here, given that we had last seen tokens over in this area, I, I suspect he's here, but there's no way for me to get to that location and be able to spot him. Okay, I gotta start thinking ahead now. So what I'm gonna do is move the vehicle one, two, three, four spaces and hop out right here with my profit. So Luke, I'm on P22, can I see you? Yes, sir. I can see you? Yes, oh, sir. <laughs> thank goodness for small mercies. All right, Luke, go ahead and put your character down and let's see if it's who I thought it was. It was. It is Blue Jay. Wow, okay. Luke, did you think I was actually gonna find you? No. I didn't either. I really was concerned you were gonna complete a second objective, maybe even three, before I was able to get close enough to find out who you were, but we have found out who you are. You are the Blue Jay. Go ahead and flip that over. And you do have the special ability that I was mentioning earlier, Frequency right? Frequency hack. Right, so Luke can activate objectives from up to two spaces away. And you've been using that ability very effectively, I must say. But now that I can see you, I have a chance to attack. Oh. The Lord. profit, <laughs> well, it gets even better. The profit gets plus two because of its mind reading abilities, plus two to its attack roll. It Luke, gets even better. Well, it does because, <laughs> for me, I, I meant not for you, because Luke's only two spaces away. So that should mean an automatic hit. So Luke, this is actually where it does go in your favor because if I roll a natural one on the die, that's an automatic miss. It doesn't matter that it would get a plus two. A one would be a miss. So there's still a chance, Luke, that you'll get out of this unscathed. Let's go to the table and see what happens. So as long as I don't roll a one, we're okay. You didn't roll a one. <laughs> oh. I'm surprised. Yeah, I am too. Just barely I avoided rolling one. I rolled a two. I get plus two. So that's definitely equal to or greater than the distance away from the Blue Jay. Luke, record a damage on your movement sheet. And the Prophet had a very successful turn. I'm grateful for that. Now it's time for me to use the beast. With the beast, I have a couple of options. One thing I was considering was going to this crossroads here. So I'd be able to see down this row while my other hunter pursues Luke over in this direction towards this objective, which is where I think Luke will probably go next. My hope would be that if Luke changes his mind and goes towards this farther objective, my beast would see when he crosses my line of sight. But honestly, I think I'd rather have the beast go in full pursuit and perhaps I'll get two chances to attack Luke very soon. And if Luke does decide to go towards the farther objective, well, it's the farthest one from the exit, so I'll have some extra time to catch up to him. With that in mind, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and stop there. Well, we've proven that Luke isn't invincible, at least, and we can see where he is on the board, but that's probably gonna change. Luke, are you all set? Yes. And we have to place a last scene token. Ah, let's go to the table and see where it's going to be placed. But of course, first, I have to complete the objective. Right. Two of the three that you need are complete. Yes. All right. So this will have to go there. Well, now that is not what I was expecting. Because this means you didn't cross our line of sight over here. You're not heading, at least not immediately, 
towards the other objective. That was not the predictable choice, so I'm gonna have to think carefully here about what I wanna do with these hunters. I think there's two main possibilities for what Luke's trying to do. He's either trying to come out and around this way and then back down towards this objective. Or he could be even playing a long con on me here and going this way with plans possibly to head down to the other objective. I don't know that I wanna pick one of these options and then put all my eggs in one basket. So I'm gonna move the beast one, two, three spaces and then use my enhanced senses. I also wanna be on this road so I can see if Luke does try to cross over in this direction. Luke, are you close to me within four spaces? Mm, no. Okay, so that means Luke then is pro let's see, my senses can go one, two, three, four. So assuming Luke didn't stay on this line, he's probably moved in this direction. So now it's up to the prophet. I mean, Luke could even have moved simply to R20 and I wouldn't be able to see him right now. But I'm going to assume maybe he's at T20. And so I will go one, two, three, four. I mean, I could even go here and that would prevent him from being able to pass through in this direction, but I think I want to be here so I have more sight. All right, Luke, that's where I'm stopping. Can I see you? Um, no. Oh dear. Well, I'm back on the emotional roller coaster again. I was on a high, now I'm on a low. I'm second guessing everything. Did I make a mistake moving the beast farther away from that objective token? Probably. But I needed to eliminate the possibility of him doing the other route, or so I thought. And the prophet didn't catch sight of Luke, so. There will be a last scene token, though. Okay, so you, you're ready to go? You've made your move? Yes. All right, let's go back to the table. Let's see what happens. The token is being moved to V22. So you pass the line of sight of the prophet. Yes. And also, I will be completing an objective next turn. Oh, here we go again. Or rather, here you go again, because I don't want any more responsibility for this mess. Not right now. Take a break, Dan. Yeah, I'm gonna take a break. You guys, please help me out. In the comments below, put your suggestion for what the hunter should do. If you like what someone says, give them a thumbs up, maybe offer them some suggestions, or you might have your own ideas. Put those in the comments, maybe some people will vote for that. Whichever one gets the most votes, that's what we'll come back and do. But until the next episode, thanks, thanks for watching. watching.